fight will crown the first undisputed heavyweight champion in the four belt era. Uh, Spencer, we'll get into the uh, the fight itself very shortly. But I mean, what what have you made of what has come out of Saudi Arabia this week? In, ter- in, in terms of some of the news stories, in terms of John Fury having that moment of madness, in terms of how Tyson's looking, in terms of how Usyk is looking and sounding. Alexander Usyk looks, you know, in tremendous shape, as he always does. Ultimate professional. His team are great as well. Been in and around those for a few few fights now. And, um, yeah, they, they're, they're, they're a real pleasure to be around. I think that for Tyson Fury, we always knew what it was going to be. When they turn up there, it's going to be a lot of shouting and it's a lot of showmanship from the Fury camp. But I think John Fury went way too far in headbutting that guy that looked like he'd just come out of school. Probably the only guy that I've seen that's smaller than myself. So, um, yeah, <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, he, was, he seemed to pick out the smallest guy there, headbutted him. he come off worse for wear, by the way, with a cut that was going down his face, but totally uncalled for. I get, I, you know, I get what goes on now. It's the world of entertainment that we live in. I understand that selling the fight, a fight that doesn't really need selling, it's the first undisputed fight in 25 years. But, you know, selling the fight, and we understand what it is, but that was a step too far, and I think that... Yeah, that just wasn't acceptable. I was, I was very disappointed with that. But both guys looking fantastic in the shape. Tyson Fury does as well. He's slimmed down a lot. Interested to see what sort of weight he comes in at. Yeah. I mean, Simon, when we call it the first undisputed heavyweight uh, championship in four, the four belt era, yeah. we, re- we are realising the enormity of this occasion, aren't we? Absolutely. Absolutely. I was fortunate enough to go to the two fights, as I said earlier on, in Madison Square Garden in Los Angeles when Lennox Lewis... Uh, fought Evander Holyfield. I think he won the first fight. It was scored as a draw, and it was billed in the New York Post as the biggest rip-off in boxing. And then I think he actually lost the second fight, and they gave him the verdict. <laughs> but here we are now, with um, 25 years later, a quarter of a century later, yeah. because of the relationship that's been engineered between Frank Warren and um, Saudi and Seller, they've been able to create a deal where they've met, put this fight on. The numbers have been have been have been created. The broadcast revenue and it, uh, interest is there. Uh, or so much of broadcast revenue because the Saudis want the eyes on the prize. And you've got two, the two best heavyweights at this moment in time, fighting. And it's a it doesn't need any more build, building up than this. It's a fantastic fight. Mm. Fantastic spectacle. Sure. So yeah. when it all boils down to it, Fury against Usyk, who will win it? Who's going to be better on the night? Um, we spoke to Alex Grasso, who spent earlier on in the week um, uh, of course uh, the the promoter of uh, Alexander Rusik and not surprisingly he thoroughly backs his man uh, you know Alexander is uh, is a huge personality he is a high scale professional he knows what he's doing he's gone through a, three training camps in a row so he's well prepared mentally physically psychologically Everything is at place, so he's now staying calm. He's now doing um, usual stuff for him. And uh, Saturday night is the high time. This is the time of greatness for the two-time undisputed champions. Uh, he's got great dignity, crash here, as does Usyk, and yeah. speaks so well. What fight are they fighting, Spencer? If you're Fury, what are you targeting against Usyk? If you're Usyk... What are you targeting against Fury? I think that if I'm Tyson Fury, I think that he has to go and take the fight to Alexander Usyk. He needs to force Usyk into making mistakes. He needs to use his attributes, which is his height, his reach, and he needs to control the pace. He needs to take Usyk out of his comfort zone. For Alexander Usyk, it's all about getting into a rhythm. What he is, is a master of working opponents out. He'll start slow, he'll have a look, and he'll try and set some traps for Tyson Fury, and then he'll fall into a rhythm. Once he gets into that rhythm, as Anthony Joshua found out, it's very difficult to break. How do you think Fury starts this fight? We've seen Fury do certain things. We saw him tee up for the first, the last really big fight that he's had. Put aside the Dillian White fight, put aside Ngannou, right? And look back at Deontay Wilder. Yeah. And look at the first fight with Deontay Wilder and how he went into that fight and he boxed him. Yeah. Right? Uh, and then the second fight he went, right, I'll meet you in the middle of the ring. Yeah. Right? And went and, and, and dealt with Deontay Wilder, uh, you know, f- full on. No fear, no standing away, no boxing. Just simply, I'll meet you power for power. Mm. The third fight was slightly different and I think I think this preparation for this fight details something he's very fit very focused uh, to use an expression from Adam Catterall he's lasered in I yeah. think we will see the best version of Tyson Fury no doubt about it we won't see a repeat of Ngannou we won't see any of that nonsense we'll see the best version of him but how does he fight it does he jump on him well it's interesting because looking at him he looks like he's going to come in at a career lightest he looks very very light so my this is my understanding of how so what Tyson... do you think he'll be sub 18 so, stone yeah I, I think that 
Yeah, maybe, maybe yeah. Or, or really low nineteens. Like yeah. it'll it'll be there or thereabouts. But maybe maybe yeah, around that. But I think that the reason for doing that is because he wants to use his. He wants to sort of try and match Alexander Usyk for speed. Yeah. I think he'll hold his ground and try and draw Usyk to him because Usyk, as we know, is bo- he's a beautiful boxer. He likes to box on the back foot. He wants opponents to come at him, and he slowly, systematically breaks them down as they're coming on. I think Fury's going to try and play. The, Try and play that. He'll understand that, and I think that he'll try and make Usyk come to him. I'm not sure if that's the right thing to do or not. Well, the question is, and the answer that that um, people uh, draw the conclusion from is that because he's a good big and always meets a good, always beats a good small one. Yeah. And you use your size. And one of the things that people were talking about with Fury is look at the Derek Chisora model of how he laid all over mm. and uses weight. If Fury's taking weight off to be able to meet what's in front of him, isn't he changing his game plan? That moves him towards the territory where it makes it more comfortable for Usyk. Absolutely. Listen, I, I would I would have used my size, my reach. I would have laid on him, done what Fury does best. I think that Fury's going to try and try and let Usyk come to him. And if that doesn't work, we've got to remember about Tyson Fury. Like as as the same with Alexander Usyk, they've got great adaptability. So if something's not working, they've got a plan yeah. B and a plan C. That's what great fighters, great champions do. That's the fantastic thing about this contest is that both guys have that adaptability. Some fighters are just one track ponies. They just know one way and one way only. These two. I've got a number of ways Compliment. of going. That's why it's all about opinion the jab, from us. I mean, Frank Warren was talking yesterday about the jab being the weapon. The, he thinks it's a it's a battle of the jabs that wins this fight. What do you think? Well, I think that I think that, that that's a that's a great assessment, and I do I do believe that if Tyson Fury, who has that reach and has a great jab, if he gets that going and yeah. gets the straight right hands going behind it, it's gonna it's gonna be all about Alexander Usyk and him changing his game plan and actually taking the fight to Tyson Fury. So yeah, so it's, it's a fascinating fight for all those reasons, and that's why we've got it as undisputed. I, I, w- I want to ask both of you this, S- Simon: Who's the most technically astute of the two? I think it's margins between the pair of them. I think probably the more technically astute on a very small margin is probably Alexander Usyk, but it's small margins. And the reasons why it's so phenomenal for, for Fury to have such a small margin between the technical ability of Usyk is because of Fury's size. You wouldn't expect someone of that size and that build to have this mm. ability to be so technically good and move the way that he does. So it makes him a unique heavyweight. Yeah. But from a technical point of view, I would say Alexander Usyk has that slight margin on the fact that he's a technically better boxer. Yeah, Tyson Fury, he's where he's got that size, he's great at fainting, trying to draw his opponent, setting traps that way. But with Alexander Usyk, he's very light on his feet. He's come up as from undisputed cruiserweight champion, now looking to become undisputed heavyweight champion. That puts him pound for pound number one, by the way, if he wins that. But for Usyk, it's all about being angles. light on light on his yeah. feet and angles. That's exactly it, Simon. He's great at throwing a one two, stepping off around the side. Fury doesn't have the capabilities to do that, but he's different in in different ways where he'll try and draw a lead and set the traps by fainting. 